Okay, so now I'm going to go into some further measure branching where we, we can start doing some slightly more uh, advanced things. So now we're going to work on some time comparison analysis. So I like to use, um, I, like, I want to know well, what was my sales this year? What was my sales this year versus last year? This highlights a couple of things that I need to fix up. First of all, I want to jump to my date table <clears throat> and I want to make sure that this is actually formatted correctly, like so, and that looks much better. And then make sure that this is actually sorted right. Okay, great. So now I'm going to create a new measure table here and I want to call it time comparison because this is where I'm going to put all my comparisons. And I'm going to call this time comparison. And you'll see here that it's got loaded into uh, my model. And then I'm going to write my first measure in here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to call it sales last year. Now, for us to calculate sales last year, well, first of all, we need to understand how calculations are done in the first place. So if we look at this current table here with total sales, actually I'll just delete out of that. If we look at this 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 sales this total sales calculation here, what's happening is that we are using a simple measure like so, sum x sales quantity times price. Now we get different results for every single day, and the reason why we get different results is because of this concept called context. And context is the environment in which a calculation is being completed. So the context for, say, this calculation right here, where, I'm at, where, my, where my mouse is, is that it is the first of the first 2015. The context for this calculation is the second of the first, and so on and so forth. Now, if we want to then compare, say, sales this year to sales last year, we need to somehow on this row, on this row, we need to calculate what happened the, the year before that. And on this very particular row, there's going to be no result because this is actually the very first result. But if we go to the first of the first 2016, there will be a result. And we want to, we actually want to show this amount, but we want to actually show it on the first of the first 2016. Now, the only way we can actually do that is by changing the context, changing the context of the calculation. And the only way we can change the context of the calculation is with this function called calculate. And calculate allows us to change the context based on these filters that we put in here. Now, <clears throat> to get the calculation for last year, all we've got to do is use the same period last year. And within that, we put in the date column. And if you go into like so, and we place that inside here, you'll see that yes, there's no cap, there's no, uh, there's no calculation for that year for that for this particular date because there is no results for that particular date. I'm just going to hide this and turn this into my measure table like so. But if we jump down to the first of 2016, you'll see that we now have these results, and that comes down to us changing the context. This same period last year function allowed us to change the context so that we could compare different time periods. Now, <clears throat> we also might want to look at profits last year, right? So to do that, you just create a new measure, but copy and paste, copy and paste is your best friend, copy and paste the last measure and then sub in total profits. And then we could then drag in profits uh, last year like so. Obviously, we've got to make sure it's formatted. And you'll see that we now have profits from last year as well. If we, if we just wanted to compare, we could, chuck, we could chuck that in there. And you can see that this is 8,000. So we're now branching out some more. We're creating some more measures, some more DAX, using some more DAX functions, uh, but doing it based on our, our original core functions. Let's keep working here on our DAX formulas and, and also our understanding of why DAX is so powerful. The 
First thing I want to do is I want to actually change what we're showcasing here. I only want to change the time frame. The reason is, is because this is the first date that we have ever had any sales. So it can't actually reach back into last year to actually find sales last year or profits last year. So I'm going to bring up my year uh, into a slicer. I'm going to create a slicer, which I can, I, I can select from the visualization palette. And I'm going to jump to 2017. And then you'll see we have, we have results on every single row now, which is great. But what we can do, what we can also do is we can use the power of context to change these results in here. We don't have to actually change the formula or, or, or our DAX measures at all. All we need to do is slice it. We need to slice it um, a different way. So I'm bringing all the counties uh, in California in this case into, into our canvas. And what I can do is I can select, I can select say Orange County and you'll see that as I make this selection, all of the results change in here. Now that is because of the power of context. We are changing the context of the calculation. Context gets placed on top of, gets placed into the calculation before any, or placed into a visualization or a table before any calculation or any uh, calculation by a DAX measure is completed. So filters always go first and then the calculations happen after that. And so if we select nothing, we're obviously getting everything, but then if we select something, uh, in this case, in our slicer, we get different results. Now context can come from a number of different places. Context can also come from a, a selection in a visual. So if I, turn, if I turn this into a, a bar chart and then I used my total sales measure here, I'm just gonna sort this you'll see that we now get these results in a, in a visualization. I can still create context by making a selection within this visual. And so if you're ever playing around with your visualizations and you're seeing results change, it's because you're changing the context of the calculation. Okay, so now that we've reviewed context, let's now do, uh, let's just do one more advanced uh, add one advanced DAX function, which I, I personally like to use a lot, and that's cumulative totals, because I feel like reviewing information cumulatively over time and comparing it over time is actually um, quite an easy way to identify trends, see how uh, see how sales, for instance, are going at over one period uh, time period versus another time period. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this back into a slicer. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually run, I'm gonna calculate these total sales. I'm gonna calculate them cumulatively. So I'm actually gonna get rid of some of these uh, measures here. And now all I've got is my total sales and I've got it for the entire, uh, for all of 2017. So if I, uh, well, all of, the, all of the remaining dates of 2017, so it's only, it's only a few days. Maybe, maybe we actually wanna to go to 2016. So let's actually jump back to 2016. So now we get an entire year's worth of dates. Okay, so if we wanted to look at this cumulatively, I'm gonna put this into my time comparison measure group, and I'm gonna create a new measure, and I'm gonna call it cumulative, cumulative sales. And to run this uh, for me, you have to use a pattern of DAX code. So I'm gonna go calculate, and then I'll put my total sales in there. And then I'm gonna use a function called filter, which create which creates some additional filters for this, um, before this result is calculated. And then I have to use a function called all selected. And then I'm gonna put my date table in there. And then I'm gonna write some logic. I'm gonna write some logic here. I'm gonna say, well, if the date is less than or equal to the max date, make sure that we calculate that number. So, if I drag cumulative sales in now, you will see that this is now calculating, if I just format it, this is now calculating our results cumulatively. So it starts off with 15,289, and then the second result is actually uh, these two numbers here combined, and so on and so forth. Now there's a number of different concepts that we're actually using here in this DAX function. Uh, and, and, to go, and to go over all of them uh, within this module would take qu quite some time. 
But if we just do a brief overview, the first thing to note is that we're using calculate. Calculate changes the context of a calculation, okay? So we're still using our initial uh, core calculation or our core measure, which is just total sales. So this is this is just a simple calculation uh, but with, with, as a sum x formula. But we're putting it inside some different logic here. And we're saying for every single row here, if it is, le if it is less than the max date, which is always gonna be the current date, so if if we get to this row and it's and and the date here is below this date, then calculate up all of the dates before, and so that's how we get this cumulative total as we go through. Now that we've created our cumulative total, we can actually turn this into a visualization. So to do that, I'm just going to copy and paste. Uh, this table i'm going to get rid of the total sales and then i'm going to turn it into an area chart and now we're going to now we can see that this is now now this is actually uh you know it's in a visualization we can we can start um we can start slicing and dicing it uh as this visualization so we can see well this is how this is how the trend of sales has occurred over time we could also multi-select here as well so if we go to the formatting section we can uh, turn off the single selection and we could also multi-select and then that cumulative total is actually going to be for each of the selections we make again here we're changing the context of the calculation and that's how uh, that's how these visualizations change the formula doesn't change the DAX measure doesn't change it's the context of the calculation that changes so hopefully with this introduction you can see what well, you can see the, the real power of using measures. Uh, DAX measures is truly the power of sitting in behind, sitting in behind Power BI. So being able to uh, write these measures and then branch out into, uh, into more advanced measures and then associating context to, that, to these measures, so putting new dimensions or new columns against these, uh, these measures, that's how we get all these, um, these results so efficiently in Power BI.